Hey guys, welcome back to week 32 of the MIT challenge, which is to learn MIT's four-year computer science curriculum in 12 months without taking any classes or even being enrolled at MIT. So today I want to talk about how do you learn something or how do you understand a subject when you start reading it or you start watching the lectures and you realize I do not get any of this. And although I've been doing these lectures and I've been talking about how optimistic I am about it being able to learn a lot of the classes, this has actually happened to me quite a bit. And it often happens because when you're in school or when you're in a classroom, there's sort of the expectation that you're going to be given material that's at your level. So you feel that if you don't understand it, then it must be your fault. You must not be strong enough or must not know the material well enough to actually learn it. And this is a big problem because I think that the proper way to think about things is that if you're struggling with math or you're struggling with calculus, for example, it's not because you're dumb. It's not because you're not a math person. It's not because you have some intrinsic quality that you're lacking, but rather just because you're missing the first steps. And so some of the other students have some of those first conceptual steps put in place and you don't. And so all you need to do is put in those conceptual steps, put in that groundwork, and then the subject will be just as easy for you or maybe not just as easy, but close to as easy for you as it is for the best students. And so to explain this, right now I'm doing a class 6.013, which is electromagnetics and applications. And I can say without feeling ashamed of it that when I first read through the course textbook, uh, basically the only thing I understood was the stuff with, that was from the last physics class. The math was very difficult and it was written in a style that was very much based on proofs and formulas. And so I read through it and for a lot of the chapters, I didn't even know what they were talking about. So this is one of the classes where I really started from not knowing very much about the subject, feeling very inadequate, feeling very much that this is maybe out of my league, this course might be too difficult. But I also know from past experience that it doesn't have to remain that way. Even if a course is extremely hard, you can go through it step by step and build up that framework so that you can eventually understand it until it's just as obvious for you as any other subject. And the truth of this is obvious when you think of going through grade school and high school classes. There was probably a time when grade 5 math seemed very difficult for you and now it seems obvious. And so it's not because just because your brain was smaller or because you were younger back then, but because you've built this framework, this foundational elements that allow you to build more complicated and more deep structures on top of it. So how do you go through it? How do you actually go through the step-by-step -step process of learning a subject when it just completely baffles you at first insight. So the method I have is twofold. The first part is that you want to really recursively deepen your understanding of the topic. So I keep bringing up the Feynman technique is my favorite technique for doing this and I've been using it so heavily in the MIT challenge that I have to mention it in almost all the videos. But basically the way it works is you write down at the top of a piece of paper the subject you want to understand and then you go through explaining it to yourself as if you were teaching it to another person. Now that's a bit of a simplified view, but what I also like to do it for is it's kind of a mental exercise to figure out also what you understand and then recursively deepen what you understand. So for example, in this class, I was trying to understand uh, transverse electromagnetic transmission lines, which are the kinds of electrical cables that are in coaxial cables and often a lot of electromagnetic applications you need to use cables to distribute a signal or across a wire. Now a lot of the math for this is fairly complicated and when I was reading through it I didn't understand a lot of the big ideas. But what I did is I went through the chapter and I just had a piece of paper open and every single point they made, I would try to explain it to myself. So this is very thorough. It's a little bit more time consuming, I'll admit. But it's amazing because even though I was reading it and I didn't understand it, if I really slowed down and really every sentence explained, okay, this is what they're trying to say in this, ex this sentence. This is how it relates to where we are in the train of progress. I'm going to put this in my own words. By slowing it down to that pace and walking through it, I was able to get that first layer of understanding. Now, does that mean I've mastered it? Does that mean that I'm going to be able to pass the exams for it? No, probably not. So a lot of students will go through this process and realize, no, I'm throwing my hands up, I still don't get it. But that's why I said a recursive process, because this is how it works. You go through that and you form that first layer of understanding that basically is just a translation of the textbook or the lecture notes into a language you understand. 
The next step is to try to build those deeper intuitions. So it's not an all or nothing process, but you can try to think, okay, what are some analogies for this? What are some other ways that can I, I can explain this? What are some examples of this? And you keep deepening it. And if you keep following this process, if you keep building on it and building on it and going deeper and deeper, then you can eventually reach a point where you are very sophisticated and you can explain it intuitively and it makes sense to you. So this process does take a little bit of time. I'm not lying to you. It, it does take a little bit more time than just skimming notes and doing those kind of things. But the advantage of this is that it's a process that works and it's very step by step. So a lot of students like to just review material over and over and over again, but you're not building a foundation. You're just kind of going over the first level over and over and over again. You want to be building up a pyramid where you have the basic understanding, which is what you get from just reading, then the slightly higher understanding from translating into words you understand, to an even deeper understanding where you're using examples, metaphors, analogies, until you're getting up to the pinnacle where you can understand it in a very intuitive way. So that's the first method, and this recursive deepening process is a method that works very well, and I've used it for many of the classes, especially on topics that completely baffle me from the start, of which there have been many. The other method is to provide a context for what you're learning. So doing practice questions with the questions and the answers, and so you have to have an answer key, you have to know what the answers are, but this also puts it into context, because sometimes you don't understand an idea because... It's, it's too difficult and you don't do the math, but sometimes you don't understand an idea because you're not exactly sure how you're going to be using it. And so in the beginning, if I really don't understand an idea, I try to do about 80% of this recursive deepening process and maybe 20% practice questions because the practice questions will inform me of putting it all in the bigger picture. Okay, so this is why we need to learn this equation because it solves these kind of problems. Or this is why we need to know this because it works in these sorts of situations. And as I get better, I do more and more practice questions because I'm more worried about the nuances. I want to make sure the details are perfectly right. And the only way you can really do that is by doing practice questions and checking your answers. So that's the general process of how I used to go through subjects that completely baffle me. So the next time you want to learn a math course, you want to learn a difficult subject, and you're feeling completely overwhelmed, just remember this process because it can work even if the entire thing sounds Greek to you because I've been through textbooks where that has definitely been the case for me. And if you just follow it step by step and you just keep going over it and each time trying to build on layers of understanding, you can reach a really deep level of understanding which is really useful. So thanks for following and I'll be updating you guys in the coming weeks on my future results and progress. Thanks.